Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. In the whole, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Do you believe in equal rights? Is it fair that those who weren't society standard were stripped of their constitutional rights? One of history's greatest mistakes was the profound amount of discrimination against oneself. It is evident that society's judgment has caused its own downfall. For things that are wrong to change, action must take place. Usually it's to discussion, and sometimes debate. An example of these debates was the military policy, don't ask, don't tell, created in 1993 and did not accomplish the desired goals to aid gains in the military. Rather, it refused to debate on their ability to serve. Since the birth of our country, Government decisions have been made about who should be permitted to serve in the U.S. military, and under what conditions. These decisions have shown society's attitudes toward minorities, such as the Revolutionary War, when Black Americans were barred from service in the Continental Army, and early in the Civil War, due to the color of their skin. Although, they were accepted as soon as military experienced personal shortages. By contrast, gay people were not granted such diplomacy, and the debate raged on as to whether they should be allowed to serve. Opposition in the armed forces to admitting any gay members has gotten stronger ever since World War II. Historically, the military did not officially discharge gays from his ranks, though sodomy was considered a criminal offense as early as the Revolutionary War. The military got rid of any soldier suspected of homosexual activity. People in court debated that gay soldiers would negatively affect union cohesion. But what of those like Marine Commandant James Amos, who said today's move could hurt unit cohesion? My recommendation is that we should not implement repeal at this time. This has been proven wrong. Gays have been hiding since the 18th century, but has anyone noticed any difference in military performance? From statistics, a growing percentage of up to 70% of military members said that having gay soldiers does not affect their performance or cause them discomfort. A combat proficiency matters much more than uh, sexual preference. We are in the middle of war. I mean, the whole, you know, don't ask, don't tell policy is the least, <laughs> the lowest priority in my mind right now. As the United States prepared for World War II, psychiatric screening became part of the induction process. If you were diagnosed as gay, you were not normal. In 1942, Army mobilization relegations were revised to include a paragraph defining both the homosexual and the normal inductee. Gay Americans were allowed to serve only when personal soldiers called for it. The need for recruits diminished near the war's end, and anti-homosexual policies were enforced with increasing diligence. Many gay soldiers were discharged involuntarily. Throughout the 1950s and the 1960s, acknowledging a homosexual orientation barred an individual from military service. Donald Lonto also violated the constitutional rights of gay military members. It violated the right of freedom of speech and expression. Even the Fifth Amendment was violated. We are given the right to remain silent. Military members just needed to be thought of as being gay, and were immediately interrogated. If ever any person talked about any other sexual orientation besides heterosexuality, they would be discharged. Shortly after his inauguration, President Clinton asked the Secretary of Defense to prepare a draft policy to end discrimination-based harassment on sexuality. Clinton's proposal was greeted with intense opposition from the Joint Chiefs of Staff, members of the Congress, the political opposition, and much of the U.S. public. After a lengthy public debate and congressional hearings, the President and Senator Sam Nunn Chair of the Senate Armed Service Committee reached a diplomatic compromise, which they labeled, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, Don't Pursue. Don't ask on tell's goal was to protect the gay military personnel and try preventing anyone from asking soldiers their sexual orientation, but also restricted anyone from discussing their sexuality. 
Bill Clinton turned this policy into a law as it represented a compromise between those who thought that gay people caused harm to the U.S. military and those who saw no problem with them serving. Clinton, however, didn't choose this policy. Don't ask, don't tell. Do you ever regret it as a policy? Oh yeah, but keep in mind, I didn't choose this policy. He was well aware that both House of Representatives and the Senate were going to adopt a total ban on gays in the military. Unless Clinton put something along the lines of don't ask, don't tell into action. See, don't ask, don't tell was only adopted when both houses of Congress had voted by a huge veto-proof margin to legislate the absolute ban on gays in the military if I didn't do something else. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was signed as a defense bill to prevent it from overturning, make it even harder for it to be repealed. Many of the military personnel had to face problems because of this policy. Some veterans say the policy had empowered heterosexual service members to harass LGBTQ troops. Lots of cases involved military members who were good at their jobs to be discharged because of their sexual orientation. This enforced the idea that to serve, they had to hide their sexuality. If you really think about it, discharging those who were good at their jobs based on their sexuality is what really affected unit cohesion. In the name of diplomacy, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was enforced for many years. In acknowledging all the mishaps caused by Don't Ask, Don't Tell, many people involved in the creation of the policy, including President Clinton, labeled it a failure. Meanwhile, the debate raged on. Candidates of the Republican nomination reaffirmed their support for the current policy, or declared that they should seek to completely prohibit military service by homosexuals. But in the 2000s, the White House and Congress were controlled by Republicans, who opposed the idea of service by openly gay personnel. So, the likelihood of eliminating the ban appeared slim. But, following September 11, 2001, deathly terrorist attacks created a renewed need for personal. And history repeats itself once more as the debate is put on hold and restrictions for the gays are once again less harsh. In 2011, the Ninth Circuit of Appeals found Don't Ask Don't Tell to be unlawful and ordered the Obama administration to stop enforcing it. The Pentagon stopped investigations on suspected gay personnel and discharges. Even so, Donald Tell was still being enforced during this process. Until finally, US President Barack Obama decided to repeal the failed policy. Obama signed off Donald Tell and went into detail that regardless of sexuality, you should still be allowed to serve in the armed forces. Before the policy was repealed, Joe Biden had stated, By repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell today, we take a big step forward, fostering justice, fairness, and consideration. Ultimately, Don't Ask, Don't Tell came to an end on September 20th, 2011, by President Barack Obama. This was a huge step forward in ending discriminatory bans that affect the gay military members for as long as we've known. Don't ask until cause misfortune to gay soldiers serve in the military as seen. The law was used to prevent discrimination. Instead, it enhanced that situation. And although it ended in some diplomacy, it negatively affected many queer soldiers' lives. That can't be denied or ignored. Like always, history tends to create more problems. To coin the phrase, history repeats itself, and discrimination against queer people is still present. Which shows that reflecting on the past can help acknowledge unfixed problems. Don't ask until history is being showcased today. Most importantly, its impact, though there still is mistreatment against queer people, despite this law being extinct. Homophobia and transphobia is a roach that will not die. A reoccurring issue that is here alright, and will not go away unless if it's discussed. It is therefore critical that the discussion, and yes, perhaps a debate, should keep on going, so we can all continue to march forward. Policy um, doesn't mean that has been taken out of, out of who I am. I'm still a patriot. I'm still a soldier at heart. I'm here because don't ask, don't tell is wrong. It's unjust.